What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Travis RC. It is time to start building this truck finally. Um, also working on another video at the same time. So we've got everything um, kind of somewhat laid out. Um, kind of still need to organize as well. We got our charger, our soldering station set up. Um, the car stand, shock stand. Um, I don't think a lot of these things are going to be used at least right away. So what we're going to do first is we're actually going to take out uh, the electronics tray, I believe, and the battery tray because we did purchase the Bauhaus RC low center of gravity battery tray and the Bauhaus RC uh, low center of gravity electronics tray. So we're going to take those out because it's going to make it a lot easier to get the motor here. And then once we get the motor in, uh, we can start working on getting those trays put back into place and then uh, figure out how we're going to get our electronics mounted up and make sure we keep the wiring clean along the way. All right, so for the sake of full disclosure, I did forget to press the record button when I did this, but uh, really all I did was take the battery tray out. Uh, I took the electronics tray out of the front here. Um, pretty easy on the battery tray, a few screws. Uh, you got to remove the strap in order to take the screws out. Um, no problem there. Uh, as far as the receiver tray goes, you just kind of try to spread the chassis plates apart enough so that it pops out because the only thing that's really holding it in there are some tabs that uh, go into a couple of these holes here on the side plate. So nothing too crazy. Um, I did take the uh, brush guards or bumper guards, whatever you want to call them off, just to give myself some more room. And uh, same thing with the wheelie bar. So those are things that'll go back on once things are, I guess, starting to get complete. So what we're going to do now is we're going to tear the motor open, see if we can get that mounted in there. Um, and then I think we're going to solder up the battery connector to the ESC as well. All right, so quick overview here. Uh, I've only soldered once and it was probably about 10 years ago. So we'll see how this turns out. Um, so basically motor ESC, um, there aren't any like banana plugs or anything. Um, everything is going to be hard soldered uh, hard soldered so we've got three terminals here on the motor which go to three terminals here and then a um, sensor port on the esc since this is a sensor setup we've got our three wires for our a b and c's that you can see here that correlate to the a b and c on the motor uh, so we can see a little smoke coming off of our uh, soldering gun here so that's getting ready to go um and then, of course, uh, we've got our positive and negative color-coded wires for the battery terminals. And then the motor came with a pinion. I'm not sure how many teeth this is. Um, the LMT did come with um, a pinion as well. And then I believe this is our sensor wire that goes from the ESC to the motor. And then it came with this fan as well. Not 100% sure how this comes into play um, as there's already a fan on the ESC, but uh, I need to read through the directions yet. So I'm going to start pre tinning some wire here and then we'll figure out what we need to do from there. And the A goes right there, so don't worry. All right, so now that I have the motor, let's go ahead and uh, pre tin these things. Are you not really doing this? No, not satisfied. Do a Herschelis? Kind of feels like cheating. Or <laughs> some wire cutters. When you're working on your RC machine, most likely you're going to have to cut the wires. Soldering really isn't a scary task. It's something that anybody can do with just a little bit of practice. What I suggest doing is find some extra wire that's hanging around. Maybe grab some extra. Share the Disney bundle with your. All right, so real quick, we'll show you the uh, soldering here. It's it's not very good, but I think it's gonna work and it's going to not come undone. And I mean, really, that's all I can ask for. Um, it's kind of hard to see without things uh, focusing, but um, like I said, it's gonna work. It's not pretty. I thought I was gonna do better than I did, but it is what it is. Um, you know, if I pick this up, nothing comes apart. You could probably see the motor a little bit better here so like I said it's not it's not pretty but 
it will probably work just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and get the battery wires uh, soldered up here, maybe put the battery connector on, and then that should be all the soldering that we need to do anyway for this build. So it'll be nice to get that out of the way uh, since I'm not uh, as strong on it as I thought I would be. And before we look at getting the motor in the truck, uh, I just wanted to do a quick test here um, and just kind of see if we get anything out of this. Um, I assume the batteries are at a storage level um, voltage, but I think we could still plug it in and see if we have life. So I've got our power switch here. So moment of truth. Let's see if I did everything right so far. Okay, we got a beep. That fan is blowing pretty good. We've got a blinking light. So, of course, we don't have a receiver or anything hooked up, so we can't uh, hit the throttle, see if the motor is going to spin. But there's a little light on the uh, power button here as well. So, so far, so good, I say. We'll find out for sure once we get the motor in the truck and get everything hooked up to the receiver. But uh, for now, anyways, it looks like we have power, so... Perfect, now things can start getting thrown in the truck. So now that we have that in here, we're going to go ahead and get the Bauhaus RC electronics tray mounted up in the front, followed by the uh, Bauhaus RC battery tray here in the rear. So it's coming together. It won't be long and we'll have something that's running. All right, so we've got the battery tray and the electronics tray both installed here, as you can see. Slip a battery in there. Probably go the other way. Fits in there great. Um, it's got a Velcro strap here, so we'll see how that holds up. I got a little bit of wiggle with these packs I'm using, so I might just use uh, a little bit of padding or something up in the front here. So that'll help, uh, I think, when we're... Landing off of jumps and whatnot, uh, we still have a servo that we can put in and a receiver. And the receiver for this electronics tray actually mounts up in here uh, at the front of the uh, Bauhaus tray. And then the, the ESC, or I'm sorry, the receiver lid uh, just uses the stock one with the stock screws. So I think we'll go ahead and get the servo mounted up and then go from there. All right, so the servo is in. Um, I discovered that the servo saver that comes with the LMT is only a 23 tooth. And uh, because the Spectrum servo is the RTR servo is a 23 tooth. And come to find out, my servo is not a 23 tooth. My servo is a 25 tooth, uh, but that's all right. We went ahead and ordered a trio servo saver from uh crawford performance engineering make sure you check brett crawford's uh site out has a ton of parts um that he distributes and also makes for uh, a lot of vehicles especially clods and, and other uh, solid axle trucks smts lmts etc so we won't be able to steer this thing until we get that servo saver since uh that servo saver will actually fit on the servo so that being said, I think we're going to get the receiver out 
get that hooked up, see if we can't bind that to the transmitter and do a quick little test to at least make sure that uh, our throttle works and we'll be able to make sure that the servo works as well even though uh, the steering linkage won't be hooked up. So I think we're gonna give that a whirl here and we're gonna throw a battery on the charger here just to make sure that that works. Put a little bit of a charge to it and throw it in here and see what we've got. So now we're going to put the battery in here, bind the transmitter and receiver, and see if we can do a little test. All right, transmitter and receiver are bound. Fast forward a little bit with all of the electronics. We have some zip ties here to try to clean up some of the wiring. So we went ahead and mounted our switch up here. And then our receiver is mounted inside of this little box here, as you can see with the uh, antenna poking out there. Um, so with everything ready to go, let's turn everything on and see if we can uh, do a little test run. Um, I might need to program the ESC a little bit to put it in a correct mode because I don't believe it has reverse out of the box. Um, so I think I'm going to play with that a little bit. I probably won't record it. Um, but basically we're going to use this little guy here to plug into the ESC just to get it in the right drive mode and then we'll do a quick test here. And I forgot to mention this earlier but we did get the Trio servo saver in. So obviously we can steer now. So that's a big plus. So uh, we just need to adjust our steering trim, maybe do a little bit of tuning, try to figure out how to get this thing in to go into uh, reverse a little bit easier. But otherwise, all of the electronics are working. So we have a running driving truck. We should be ready to go by Saturday for the event in Marshfield. Now that being said, we've got new tires and wheels. So we've got the Renegade tires from J Concepts the blue softer compound uh struggled whether or not to go with black or white just decided to go with black uh, we got some orange beadlock rings to go in here as well um that i got today and they look great but they don't fit you're supposed to be able to press them in and i really would not like to glue these if i don't have to so we'll see what we're going to do with that um i did order these other rings directly from J Concepts at the same time I ordered the wheels, but they are not quite the color I was going for. I wanted more of a bright, obnoxious orange that's gonna fit that wild side theme a little bit better. So what we need to do now to get these tires mounted is we need to install these guys on each wheel. So these are the Freestyle RC uh, tribute adapter. So, um, I mean, these are very well made. They're machined aluminum um, because otherwise these tires will not fit on the LMT uh, with the way the LMT is set up. So we're going to go ahead and get these adapters installed on the wheels and then we can get these tires installed on the truck. All right, tires and wheels are on. They're looking great. Uh, we'll probably put the planetary covers on in the middle there to hide the silver screws. Um, we did get a nut driver in today that will fit down into those wheel adapters. 
so that'll help clean up the look a bit. At some point, I'd like to paint those planetary covers orange to kind of make everything pop, but it's done. Everything's done here. So we're rocking and rolling. Uh, we got the body posts mounted. Um, up front here, I had to kind of trim them down because otherwise they were hitting the servo right here at like half compression. So I just used uh, an old pair of body scissors to kind of just cut them up so they're not pretty, but they work. Um, the only other thing that I need to address is how to mount this ESC, the double-sided adhesive that came with it. I don't think likes the 3D printed material of the Bauhaus electronics tray. So I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to just mount it up with zip ties. I think that'll be more than good enough. It's not like I'm doing anything super hardcore with this. And then I think I just need to get a little bit of padding in here to keep the battery from moving around a bunch while we're running. But uh, everything is secure. We put these back on, which I don't really know why. Uh, I might take them off at some point. Otherwise, everything is ready. We put the wheelie bar back on. We got it adjusted to the right position to fit the body. So let's put the body on there and kind of see what this looks like. And it's mostly finished state. All right, there it is. Here is the wild side Ram Rebel. Uh, I don't know that I love the crew cab. I really don't, but that's what it is. And I think it still looks great regardless. So uh, once we get the orange beadlocks here, we will get basically our finished truck. So here's just to give you a rough idea of what that's gonna look like. These don't secure themselves like they're supposed to, but this gives you the rough idea. Um, you see, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, the real truck normally runs, uh, actually, I'm not sure that it runs a, a colored beadlock or not. I can't, I can't remember. I know I've seen other people with the wild side bodies on their RCs and they run a purple beadlock and that looks really good too. I just really like orange and I think that helps pop, so. So that concludes the build video. Um, I didn't record a lot of the boring stuff um, of putting certain things back together, but kind of gave you the meat and potatoes. So I'll probably do one more video here just uh, of some testing and tuning before the event on Saturday. And then I'm also going to give you guys some pretty big news um, about, uh, you know what? I don't even want to say what it is. I don't even want to hint at it, but big news coming in the next video along with the test and tune and just overall making sure that we're prepared. Um, I'd really like to have these colored bead, bead lock rings here um, by Saturday. I think we're going to get them. So that might be in the next video as well. So thanks for hanging tight. Subscribe, like, share, notification bell, comment, all that stuff. We'll see you in the next video.